we're here. Uh, we're here today in Senator Donald Norcross's office in the fifth district uh, to talk about you know, the very contentious and very important Rutgers Rowan merger. Uh, Senator Norcross has definitely been one of the instrumental figures in this whole process since the beginning. So I'm really appreciative that he has given us the time to come in and sit down with him today. Go ahead and um, stop by. So first, I'll, I'll get right into it. Um, the initial plan that came out is not the plan that's currently really being discussed now. And early on, uh, you came forward writing an op-ed originally in the Courier Post expressing a different position from what was originally proposed. Now, uh, I mean, I haven't seen anything, but, but you do have a different proposal that's being worked out. Could you just explain what that is and how it's different from the initial plan? Well, let, let's go back. Uh, the report uh, that the governor released back in uh, early February, uh, upon reading it, and initially uh, was in, I was rather surprised. Uh, the merger of two great institutions in southern New Jersey, and living right on campus at Rutgers uh, down in the city, I found that uh, not to be uh, not only my liking, but I don't think it was good for the district or southern New Jersey. So I had put together an op-ed piece and uh, offered my, uh, my issues uh, with the original plan. And that's where we started a few months ago. Um, there were, quite frankly, competing plans, the one that the governor rolled out. But the plan that uh, we're discussing now, and certainly a meeting with so many groups, as you know, mm -hmm. uh, takes really three basic concepts or visions that A, Rutgers, Camden needs to remain here in southern New Jersey. That number two, it needs to have its independence from the central bureau up in uh, New Brunswick. However, remaining the linkages that they have uh, for the students uh, so that uh, their names will remain with Rutgers, that the faculty will still be part of their system, the collective bargaining agreements, issues along those lines, things that make sense. Uh, and the third item is that the partnerships with Rowan University uh, get stronger and expand. Those are the three basic visions. But let's back up a little bit and say, why are we here? Uh, over the course of the last 50 years, Rutgers Camden has grown, but essentially since 1988, there hasn't been a new building on campus. That's prior to the law school, which came, the majority of that funding came from the legislature. 1988 was the last time a new building went on the campus. Now, if you look at New Brunswick, tremendous difference. When we take a look over the course of the last year, the funding disparities between the seven southern counties, essentially from 195 south, is 65 million for higher ed versus 648 million for the north. Less than 10% of higher ed dollars are making its way down to South Jersey. When we talk about the number of seats in four-year institutions, it's approximately 25,000 seats in southern New Jersey, 220,000 in northern New Jersey. Those are just a fraction of the issues that we're dealing with. We don't want to be the stepchild of the Rutgers Central Bureau in New Brunswick. We want to be a full partner. The scraps that have been thrown off the table is not going to suffice anymore. We need to have our independence, the revenue streams to grow our campus stronger and independent. Okay, well, so if, if, the, if the idea is to, well, actually, let me back up for one second. One thing that's been on a lot of people's minds, before we get into, like, the details of, of the three points that you just described, the governor set this July 1st deadline for enactment, not, not obviously not implementation, that would take far longer, but for enactment. Uh, is this a deadline that that you see as as being realistic, or uh, what is what is your preferred timeline? Well, <clears throat> two governors before have attempted uh, the reorganization of higher ed and failed miserably. Uh, the governor, I applaud in the fact that <clears throat> reorganizing higher ed so New Jersey comes from 47th place in its support to the top bracket. So I think that's important, and I also believe that what gets measured gets done particularly when you set guidelines. There's a tremendous amount of work that needs to be done in order to roll this out by the end of this year, which is the June 30 deadline that the governor talks about. Uh, I'd like to see that done. Uh, I think it can be done. There's just a tremendous amount of work to get there. Well, I mean, it's pretty clear now that 
the governor is not going to be issuing a reorganization plan to get. Well, I mean, if he wants it done by July first, he's already passed the deadline for the sixty days in the legislature. So it's going to have to go through legislation, normal yes. legislation. When can we expect to see a draft bill? Soon. <laughs> not to be coy with you. Uh, interested parties, myself, Senator Sweeney, who is the Senate President, and others are working on crafting that legislation. But it is a process, uh, and the vision that we laid out, and certainly, you know, the, the uh, Senate and the Assembly can craft a bill, but unless it's signed by the governor, we don't go any further. Mm -hmm. You know, the UMDMJ, the Cancer Center, the higher ed bond actors, lots of things have to be done by the end of the right. budget year. And I believe that this will be right in the middle. You also, you cited the, it's, it's brought up often in this discussion with the, we're 47th in higher education spending across the country. Um, a lot of people seem to be kind of confused though as to how this plan, and especially in its, its an original, the original incarnation of the plan with the, with the takeover of Rutgers by Rowan, um, how that actually addresses that issue and where the money would actually come from. I think uh, when there, at least from my own perspective when I speak about that, is the fact that, first of all, most New Jerseyans don't know that we're 47th. And the fact of the matter is, when you're 47th in the state, and we're in a part of the state that is just a fraction of that, and then beginning scraps off the table, is trying to focus on the fact that we're not investing enough in higher ed in New Jersey or in southern New Jersey. So when we start taking a look at redoing higher ed in New Jersey, that we put that on the table, that when we start investing in higher ed, we're investing in the future of New Jersey and that grows. So putting that on the table to look at and to be a measurement for growing is why I believe that we're speaking of it. Well, I guess, I guess my, my more practical question in that is, is if, if more funding is going to be flowing to the south for higher education, is it going to come at the expense of the schools in the north that are already getting far more funding, or is there going to be a new influx? Of well, funding? let's be very clear about what we're talking about, and I laid out some figures for you. We're only asking for our fair share. Mm -hmm. And much of the discussion and the screaming I hear about are those who have all the resources. So, of course, they want to keep the resources because that's why South Jersey gets less than 10 percent. So I want to keep it all up north. What we want is our fair share. So the way the pot is distributed should be equitable. We have 30 percent of the population less than 10 percent we're getting. So there's some reconfiguration that definitely needs to be there. But more importantly, let's grow the pot. So we're talking about growing the pot so there are more dollars in higher ed and certainly talk about redistribution so South Jersey uh, gets their fair share. Would that, would that most likely be through a bond issue? or That is one of the items that's being currently discussed. Okay. Um, well, back to, back to the, the plan that you, that you were talking about earlier with a, a more autonomous Rutgers Camden. What, what exactly would that look like? I mean, you know, it's still, if we're going to maintain the identity of, of Rutgers Camden, there still has to be a connection to New Brunswick yeah, in, in a way. So, I mean, would there be another board of governors for Rutgers Camden? If so, what would that be? How would that be comprised? I mean, who would pick the people to be on it? Would there be anybody from New Brunswick on it? Um, just would it would it be Rutgers in name only, or would there be a true Rutgers connection? No, still? no, absolutely not. Rutgers is a fine institution uh, throughout the state of New Jersey and nationally. It is in uh, prominence. But when we take a look at what has not happened at the Camden Satellite Campus is the investment. It has been pitiful. When Rucker spends more <coughs> on its sports program than it does on the entire campus of Camden, there's a problem. And those are the things that we're looking to do. It. So when it comes to faculty, tenure, those things uh, that are so important and they do well, we want those to remain. But we're certainly not looking to send uh, a dollar worth of tuition and getting less than 50 cents back. That's not how it should right. work in the future. So those decisions, whether to expand, which had been historically very difficult. Uh, the law school would not have been built had it not been for the legislature uh, allocating the money. The fact of the matter is they wanted to cancel dorm projects, which are being built there now. The campus has not been invested into anywhere near the degree it needs to really fulfill the obligation we have to southern New Jersey. Okay. 
Um, and you, you brought up a, a couple of other issues earlier, uh, civil service issues, contractual issues with faculty. Mm -hmm. There's There's been a lot of talk about debt issues between the different institutions involved in this deal. Um, tenure problems. I mean, and of course, there's there's the one thing that seems to loom over this entire plan since the beginning that, that no one really knows right now, and that's the cost. And I know you don't know what the cost is, and I don't know what it is. Nobody I don't seems think to anybody sees Yeah, nobody what knows. The cost nobody is. knows yet, and that's that's actually what my question is. Um, you know, this July first deadline has been there since I guess mid March. Is it really? Do you think it's wise to enact a piece of legislation that puts forth a plan as substantial and as important to higher education as this one, without actually knowing what it's going to cost or how any of these other uh, issues that people don't think about when, when even when they're disputing any of the, of the merits that exist on this plan, they don't think about the contractual issues, and at least the students well, don't. Well, we were certainly, in fact, but, that was the one yes, bring those issues um, up. But, but without knowing the cost, is it really wise to push forward so quickly? What I think is wise is that we move this plan forward for the state of New Jersey to invest in higher ed. We're not going to know every figure down to the penny. Quite frankly, you can't because the vision hasn't been completed and the legislation hasn't been laid out. Mm -hmm. So calculating many of those costs are going to be difficult now. They'll be easier in the future. But the costs are known. But what we're not talking about is it seems like the merger that's taking place in the north, the UMDMJ and Cancer Center, are they're spending lots of money right now putting that together and nobody <coughs> seems to be focused. It's okay to do that in the northern part of the state, but when it comes to Camden, we're not hearing that. And that's the sort of disparity that I, quite frankly, am sick and tired of. We're not asking anything more than we're due, we're just asking for what we're doing. That's what's going on here. Uh, getting back to the question you asked before, is I'm looking to create, and whether you call it a board of governors, board of trustees, or otherwise, yes, there needs to be a separate board for down here in Camden. And the appointments for that should work much like they are for Rutgers now, with advice and consent of the Senate uh, and appointments to the governor. But in addition to that, we're also taking a look at making sure that South Jersey is represented on this board. Mm -hmm. So I think there's regional disparities or uh, issues that we're dealing with now that the southern part of the state is not fairly represented on the board, it certainly will be addressed in what I believe the legislation will have. Right. Um, obviously, now with the with keeping keeping the name Rutgers and having Rutgers Camden being more autonomous, uh, the name Rowan has kind of almost exited from the conversation to an extent. What would I mean? I'm assuming that this plan is going to include some sort of cooperation with Rowan. What type of cooperation would it be and would there be any control over the Camden campus coming from Glassboro? Well, it's an excellent point you make here. You know, <clears throat> the bulk of the discussion and the focus has been on the Camden campus, not on your MDMJ, the Cancer Center, the bond issue, or other things. My district runs from Camden City down to Harrison Township in Gloucester County, which mm -hmm. is literally uh, right next door to the Glassboro. Uh, I had talked about creating those strategic partnerships. Rowan is now building a medical school right down the street from where we are now in Camden City. Uh, they have a great engineering school. We hope to have the new extension of the light rail connect those two towns, Glassboro to Camden, and that can be more the research corridor. So certainly uh, Rowan is going to be involved in this, and quite frankly, you know, much like Rutgers has been underfunded when it comes to state dollars, I believe Rowan is in there along with Stockton. Again, 30% of the population, less than 10% of the money, and that's what we're looking. So Rutgers, Rowan are looking to develop those strategic relationships. Um, obviously, you know, politics was a big part of, of all this, this uh, issue as well. It came into it very early on, especially from the people who opposed it. Um, how, how do you respond to critics, including Senator Lautenberg, who I know you sat down with the other day, actually, after the, after the press conference, but how do you respond to critics like him who've alleged that, that this merger and these, and these plans have been more for the benefit of, of you know, people like your brother, George Norcross, or for the benefit of Cooper Hospital at the expense of Rutgers Camden? Well, let me make it absolutely clear. Uh, what my brother George does, does is his business and I was the elected official from the 5th District, and I'm going to act accordingly. But when we talk about, <clears throat> that's why I wanted to meet with Senator Lautenberg to say, whether it's he or others, you know, 
put the politics <coughs> aside of this. We're trying to raise New Jersey above the fray and trying to throw hand grenades into the midst of it to blow it up, I don't think is fair for anyone. Again, when you have all the revenue in the northern part of the state, it's to their advantage for those people to try to blow this deal up. Then they keep all the marbles and they can go home happy. I'm not going to put up with that. We need to have uh, not only the funding distribution equal, but all the resources when it comes to research dollars and otherwise. It needs to be a win for South Jersey and a win for New Jersey. So keep the politics out of it. Mm -hmm. Let's, instead of fighting the, po the political game, why don't we try to help the students, which is the focus. The, the one other piece that involved Senator Lautenberg that got a lot of press was the, the letter he sent to Arnie Duncan. Uh, yeah, to Arnie Duncan, uh, asking for a federal review from the Department of Education. Uh, and then there was immediately another letter that came out from a lot of the legislators down here against that, uh, or against against La Senator Lautenberg's involvement. Uh, would you be for a federal Department of Education review, and if not, why not? Well, I'd love to see a, a review of the dollars that New Jersey is getting and say, why are we 47? That's what the review should be on, not on the political crap that's being thrown around. And I think it... You've seen that most of that is starting to die down because they realize that it's not a fight on whether or not Rutgers stays in Camden, which is very important to us, but it's a fight over getting those resources. So if we want to really go to the federal government saying, why are you giving New Jersey so little money? Why are we 47th in getting dollars uh, from the feds, yet we're probably in the top uh, tier of paying taxes? That's the question I'd like to have answered. Um, and, you know, finally, <clears throat> there are some, some people who, even looking at, you know, the, the new compromises that are taking place, are, are somewhat skeptical, and, and I assume there's always going to be people who are skeptical no matter what the plan ends up looking like. However, there are, there are a lot of people who are skeptical saying that uh, Rutgers Camden may be being set up to fail in a sense, that making it autonomous from Rutgers New Brunswick is, it's not going to be able to stand on its own, and then in a few years' time we could see ourselves being taken over by Rowan or, an, or another institution or or, you know, uh, changed in some fundamental way, again, just a few years down the road. Uh, the do you have few, any, Yes, there are very few guarantees in life. One is that we will all die at some point. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, I don't think Rutgers is going away this year, next year, or any time. They're a fine institution, great reputation, not only here in New Jersey, but across the nation and the world. And I think they're going to remain. I'm very confident of that. Okay, well, well, thank you very much for sitting down with us, and uh, if, unless there's anything else you'd like to say uh, well, to everyone. But the fight continues. We have a lot of work to do before June 30, along with a lot of other budgetary issues, and uh, I'm confident that this becomes a win, not only for the 5th District, but for South Jersey and for New Jersey as a whole. All right, well, we look really, we really look forward to seeing your, your draft legislation, and I hope that maybe we can speak again after it comes out. We can go through it, maybe, uh, through the details. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.